this episode of Rugged Expeditions, I've got the chance to try out Gunworks brand new long range rifles and get a private tour of their factory where they are assembling the best rifles on earth made right here in America. Can you believe it? You're gonna love this. Brought to you by Gunworks. The long range experience. There are still wide open places in Western America that have endless horizons. Making it the perfect location to manufacture and test the best long range rifles made anywhere on earth. Yep. I'm talking about Gunworks. And what better part of the Old West to base your rifle manufacturing company than in Cody, Wyoming? Cody has a storied history of Wild West action and is where the real Buffalo Bill Cody lived and worked at the turn of the century. Surrounding Cody is some of the greatest hunting in all of North America. The area is especially known for the super antelope that can be found not very far from town. All right, that's enough of looking at antelope. We're supposed to be working. We're going to the Gunworks factory. Due to the town's location on the outskirts of the 2.2 million acre Yellowstone National Park, it's the stopping off place for thousands of tourists each year who seek out the beauty and wildlife of the vast Yellowstone ecosystem. What a gorgeous area. So today, before we test out my brand new Gunworks rifles, we're beginning our trip to Cody with a tour of the Gunworks Custom Shop. And who better to guide us through the process of manufacturing Gunworks rifles than the founder and owner and an avid outdoorsman and hunter himself, Mr. Aaron Davidson. Wow, this is exciting. Getting to see where all the magic happens. How you make these fantastic rifles. Tell me all about it. All right, cool. Okay. Every rifle starts with assembling the action to the barrel. Okay. So we've already manufactured an action. We've paired up a bolt. We've shipped the bolt out to get a, a, a coating process. Everything's been assembled, QC'd, and it's all good. We're centering the bore of that barrel to a sub two ten thousandths of an inch dimension so that when we put that chamber in there, it's perfectly in the middle. Beautiful. So he, he, we basically Kanban up the days. So here's, here's his day production that he's finishing up. You got a titanium action there. You can see the bolt's already coated. Everything's been fit and uh, QC'd and checked. So what he's doing is just fitting the thread tenon and then cutting the chamber. All right, we've got a barrel you know, on our contour. So we take those two things and you pair them together. That's what starts a manufacturing build for rifle. So simultaneously to starting that uh, barrel action, we're kicking a stock shell over to the inletting area and we'll, we'll machine that stock to exactly fit all the different options that you've picked for your rifle. Okay. So in this station, we're pulling a, a stock shell, that a generic one. So here's just a carbon uh, magnus that's uh, out of the mold, uh, some initial prep work done, but now it's ready for machining. And he'll pull that product and, and drop it in this machine. And, and kind of the same thing, we've got a set of computer codes that we generate in that builder. He'll just plug in some numbers over here. It, it'll, it'll build the inlet program customized for that stock and it'll inlet barrel contour, bottom metal, action, left hand, right hand, all that stuff. When it comes out, it's got all of the you know, recoil pad, notch, all that stuff machined in it, ready to go. We even throw the manufacturing order number on there to keep track of them. So in the, in the expansion of space here, one of the coolest things we were able to do was to, to dedicate some space for stock manufacturing. So we're able to produce enough stocks for our rifle production, and then we're also selling rifle component stocks for people that want to upgrade 
you know, if you have certain Remington style actions, we can build a, a stock for you. Great. So uh, again, that configurator tool will let you do some of that. So when we started building the stocks, you know, first of all, we went and hired the right guys so that we could go about it the right way. Rather than trial and error, we went at it from an engineering side. And when we we're building stocks, first thing we did was we broke a couple hundred stocks. So we would break the competitors, we would break ours, we would change our design, we would break ours, change our design. So we went through a lot of iterations. And right now we feel like we're 25% stronger and 25% stiffer than our competition. Wow. So how does the stocks get put together? So first thing that we've got to do is we've got to cut them. We've got to cut the patterns. This is probably, this. I don't want the competition doing this. This is so smart. We basically do a, a pattern generation of the 66 different pieces that go into a stock. And this thing will cut them out and he will package them all up so that we end up with a kit for each stock that, that, that we're doing. And then, and then everything is precise, perfect. So uh, once we cut those pieces, we've got them kitted up. We'll come over here and we'll do a layup. And we're dealing with prepreg, which is nice, it's clean. I don't know if you've ever seen some of the other guys, the way they make stocks. They'll get a paintbrush and some resin and they'll paint it and then they'll stick the, a fabric down. Okay. And it, it can make a really nice finish, but it ends up being heavy because it's resin intensive. And your overall system essentially matches the, the bulk of the material you use. So if you get rid of the resin, you're left with carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is stiffer, stronger, you know, lighter. You don't need than, it if you yeah. do it right. So you get rid of as much resin as possible. So if you start with a prepreg, you're, you're already light, light on resin. But like I said before, 66 pieces go into one of these stocks. There's a lot of strategic placement of material. Uh, once that layup's done, then we close up the molds, we get our pressure up, and then we'll, we'll put them in the cure cycle, cure them up, and we end up cracking out a stock that looks pretty good. Can't wait to carry it. Okay, so next station is finish. And so here's our finish room. We do a spray coat finish on the uh, barreled actions. So that's all Cerakote, and you got five or six different color options that you can do there. And then we do a, kind of a pole lane finish on the rifle stocks. So you can get a straight carbon fiber stock, uh, but most of us want a little color, a little flash in there. So we've got a lot of different camouflage style or solid colors that we do. And so, you know, whatever is your style, your flavor, it's like you build that out and that's what we'll put together for you. So we've got lots of different parts. Uh, one of the things that you'll, <clears throat> that's, that's interesting about Cerakote is that you have to bake the finish. Mm. So all this stuff's coming out of the oven, barreled actions, bottom metal, all those parts and pieces get finished. So this is going to make it so whatever environment you've got it in, whether it's the salt water, you know, because we're obviously traveling all over yeah. using the rifle and we still try to use stainless. We still try to use aluminum. Those, yep. are, those do well in those environments. Uh, for strength and purposes, we do have some stuff that's chromoly, mm -hmm. you know, like our bolt, and that's where we do a little higher performance coating, uh, like a, a nickel type finish. Mm -hmm. um, so, so in general, Cerakote's really, really solid, but it's not impervious. Sure. So John does like almost all of the assembly. I think once in a while somebody else gets in here. Uh, he's fast. Uh, what's your average time on a Magnus or climber for assembly? So we're about 40 minutes to assemble complete gun, uh, start to finish, and that includes mounting a scope and kitting it in the shipping packaging. Wow. So this is where the final checks and balances, putting it together happens. No, there's even more. More? But wait, there's more. Wait. <laughs> so once John's done, I, I would say we've only completed about half of the work required to finish this gun. That's where the guys break them in, they shoot for precision, make sure it shoots good enough groups, and then they shoot for accuracy. They shoot the long range data, and they, they basically build those ballistic profiles for those guns, yep. and then they calibrate the ballistic turrets, and that's what everything, all the final QC stuff, the feeding and, and the function, the scope performance, all that stuff happens right there. So if it passes those guys, the goal is once that finishes their station, it's ready to go on a hunt. So that's a huge difference between you and anybody else. So if you look at the ammo, the thing you'll notice is it's not on a machine. Yep. Uh, we use the we use the Dillons. It's still a single stage, right? I yep. mean, we're still loading one at a time, but it helps us do a couple things at once. So uh, we use floating tool heads, and then we use some special dies 
that prep the brass the right way. Okay. So that again, it's 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 here. But we found that we can get really straight ammo on here, like straighter than we can on a single stage. Mm -hmm. We get some really nice stuff. And then the other thing that you'll notice is that every single powder charge is getting weighed on a scale. I saw that. Isn't that something? It's a big deal. Yeah. The, the powder is a big deal. We make brass, so we do all the brass for all the ammunition that we load. Mm -hmm. So if we take a look at this. This is a 28 nozzler in mm -hmm. Gunworks brass. So we're, we're controlling all of our quality on brass. We do source bullets and powders and primers. But this gives us this gives us one of the places where you have ammunition problems. It gives us all the control over that. That's what it's all about, controlling your own destiny. I think so. So this is where all your research and development is done, right here in this room full of brainiacs. Man, I gotta claim my office space for a little bit of it, but oh. yeah, this is where the cool stuff's going <laughs> okay. on. Yeah, so it's uh, it's pretty fun to take a concept and you know go through that prototyping process uh, for example you know taking the, a bottom metal project like this adding something to it which is a, 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 a more hunter configured you know detachable magazine uh -huh. and making it compatible with all of our long load lengths you know the long cartridges with uh, has he's got some really cool features that he designed and that we'll probably patent on you know controlling where the cartridges in the magazine box Wow, look at all that, huh? So one of, one of the things that's really cool about the, the stock manufacturing for us is we build all of our own tooling. So if we want to do a new stock design, it's like we come in here, we solid model it, then we go out to the machine, we cut the tool, then we go to the stock area and we build the stock. And so we have the capability of doing all that right here. And so it helps us bring up new products and improve process and everything when you have control over it. I shoot better with a suppressor because there's less you know, muzzle blast that I have to deal with. You know, you put a, a weight on your barrel, it changes your harmonics a little bit. Uh, we've been really impressed with our product. One of the goals was, you know, hunting cartridges, so big magnums. Yep. A lot of suppressors aren't rated for those. And then an, another thing that we looked at was, everybody else, you take your suppressor off, the adapter comes with it. And so one of our primary directives was, you put it on, you can take it off, nothing sticks. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim's background is manufacturing engineering, so he he's our engineer that supports manufacturing operations. So a lot of that system that we talked about with the bombs and the engineered bill of materials and stuff, Jim's played a, a really big role in that with me to get that up and running and develop. This looks like you got a little hands-on. You got wrenches and tape measures and this isn't just computer stuff, you're actually doing it. Yeah. This is for when things don't go right <laughs> and you need to give it a little bit of extra enforcement. We've got bigger ones too. Oh really? <laughs> oh, yeah. This is for little problems. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Now this one has been tested, it's ready to go. It's obviously getting shipped out to a soon to be very satisfied customer. Look at that. Is that an amazing piece of work or what? It's really- well, I, I actually can't answer that question. It's a little self-serving. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get this one put away so it goes off to the guy. I'm sure he's dying to get his hands on it. Yeah. Usually. Well, thanks a million for having us. Thank this you. has really been fun. Now it's time to test out some of these TAC driver rifles out on Gunworks private range. But first, the teaching staff at Gunworks is gonna try and teach an old dog new tricks. What? You know, there's a lot to learn in the classroom before you get out shooting your rifle. And Gunworks has a host of former military sharpshooters ready to teach you the subtle techniques that will make you a much better shooter. Yes, even you can improve your shooting skills with lessons from the pros at Gunworks. The courses they put on throughout the year are especially designed for hunters of all skill sets. So whether you're new to shooting, whether you've been doing it forever, whether you think you're no good, whether you think you're awesome, trust me, you need to go to the Gunworks shooting school. The man right here. Now see, this just goes to prove that you can teach an old dog new tricks. Yes, you can. 
As long as that dog's willing to learn. <laughs> How exciting is this? I've got my brand new Gunworks rifle topped off with a Zeiss Victory V8. This is the two and a half to 20 model, which I love. Gives you lots of range. We're shooting the Swift. You can see it right here, the seven millimeter A-frame, 160 grain, perfect round. We're gonna give it a try out here, see how we're gonna do. It got sighted in, so now we're just tuning it up and making sure that everything's gonna be okay, but I love this thing. Look at the paint job on it, the detail on this barrel. Just a fantastic rifle overall. With everything I've learned this week, I can't wait to get out in the woods and the mountains with my brand new American-made long-range rifles from Gunworks. That's about, that's about as good as you get right through the Orange circle at a hundy. Woo! This is gonna be a great hunting season this year.